second, I want you to imagine how it was back in the old days. Dirt flying everywhere, wind chimes knocking in the back, and just what a great time everybody had. Hi, I'm Whitney Little, and I want to tell you about the history of Reggae. So you may be thinking right now, what's in it for me? Why do I need to listen to her talk about something that I have no clue about? Because if you're like me, you had a hidden talent for racing. And at first, I didn't like racing. I hated it. I thought it was a boring thing, the, board, the most boring sport in the world. Now, I love it. Since it's the second most watched sport in the world, you can you know, see why. So, today I'm going to tell you about how racing got its name, the great tracks, and what new additions came to NASCAR. So, first of all, they started out with bootlegging. So, I hope everybody knows what bootlegging is. It's like pollen moonshine. Don't do but, um, so men tried to outrun each other from point A to point B. So what they would do is at night they would make moonshine and then during the day they would run. And hopefully not be caught by the law. Um, so each time they would go out they thought of new things because they would try to, you know, of course outrun each other. So they thought of bigger carburetors, bigger fuel tanks, you know, so they could go faster. Um, and anything that would just outrun their neighbor. So once this got to be a, you know, a big thing, there was a man named Bill France that got interested and he said, hey, you know, we can make this thing bigger, you know, actually make it something. And so he got a bunch of group of people together at the Starline Hotel in Daytona, Florida, and they made it to where it was the National Auto Re Association of Auto Racing, which is NASCAR. And so now that I've told you about how racing got its name, I will now tell you about the great tracks that there are now. The first ever race in NASCAR was at Daytona Beach, just on the beach, not a track, just on the beach. And um, there was a total of 24 drivers that day, and they crowned their first winner with $1,700. So actually for a new sport, that was a lot of money. Um, then the first year, um, there ended up being 52 races at 20 tracks. So that was every week at a track. Um, now there are oval tracks, asphalt tracks, dirt tracks, and road courses. Um, mostly the dirt tracks are like smaller, you know, not as big because that's where they started out with the dirt track. Um, oval tracks, the fastest one I think now in NASCAR is Darlington. Um, I think you reach over 215 miles an hour. So that's the fastest one. Um, and according to NASCAR, there are over 1,700 tracks today. So that is a little less than the students that attend LR. So for every student that attends Little Round University, there is a track across the world somewhere. Now that I've told you about how racing got its name and the great tracks, I will now tell you about the new additions to racing. In the beginning, there weren't any rules. You could do whatever. I'm sure Jeremy knows how the old cars used to be and now the difference. I'm sure you all see that. Um, they just regular cars off the showroom floor just did whatever they wanted to do. Um, and anything that made it faster, they did. No matter how much money it was, they made it faster. Now, um, or in 1964, there was an accident um, with a man named Fireball Robertson. He hit the wall and it caught on fire and he wasn't able to get out and he actually died. And that was um, when Bill Frank said, hey, we need rules here to protect our people. And so then they um, they started having wind nets. Um, they had to tape up their lights. They had to make um, you know just like safety rules. Like instead of metal fuel cells, they now have rubber fuel cells. So if they catch on fire, they don't like it, they're not explosive. So now this I'm gonna show you a little bit of how it's different or how it was. I can move on this that way. Um, they used to use these. I'm sure for like, you know, to keep the sound out. Now they use these, which they have like little radios in them, so you can you know, talk to them. Sometimes you don't want to, but. And these were like the old style keys that they used to use. They were just, you know, turnkey ignition switches, and now they use these. You have to have these to start one. And here are, this is an old suit, but they, some of the people still use them, so it's a new suit, but they were two pieces, just like this. And before this, they just had tops, and they wore blue jeans with it, before that, and now you have one. So, 
and they're really heavy. And they have to be at SFI certified for you to race. So if you catch on fire, then hopefully it won't burn. And then lastly, these are the helmets that they used to use. They really nothing to them. And now you have to try out these with the shield and all, so you don't get stuff in your eyes because there's a bunch of stuff that flies up. And then here is a Hans that you have to wear now, which like attaches to your helmet so that when you hit, your head can only go so far so your neck doesn't break. That sounds really bad, but um, so that's what they used. So now that I've told you about how racing got its name, the great tracks, and the new additions, um, the evolution of racing is going lap by lap, one turn at a time.